Hey, what is going on guys? So, last time we spoke about planes, I showed you how awesome the trench fighter is, and I promised you I would do a video about dogfighting. Now, there is a dogfighter loadout specifically for dogfighting. So, what is it like if we try that real quick? Now, I'm pretty confident that the primary weapon I'm using right now is the exact same primary weapon you get on the trench fighter. So, really, you're getting the exact same abilities in the air for air-to-air -air combat as with the trench fighter. I think I read somewhere that it's supposed to be faster, so you've got, you got the edge when you do some turns that you can turn faster than your enemy. But ultimately, it's only slightly better than the trench fighter at air-to-air -air combat. And as you've seen previously, I can run a huge score with the trench fighter with that element of air-to-ground combat. So why on earth would you choose this plane over the other one? Well, let's see if this plane can even do air-to-ground combat. This guy has jumped out of this plane. He's shooting at me. He was really refusing to let me kill him in the air. And so he's jumped out. He's in the middle of the desert. Surely I can kill him. This is going to be a good test of whether this plane is even remotely effective at air-to-ground combat. I mean, look at this, guys. I cannot kill this fucker in the desert. Look at him. I can't get him. Oh, where did he go? Where is this guy? Where the hell has he gone? There he is, hiding in the wreckage. <laughs> this is a serious battle between us. He knows I'm hunting him. But I can't get him. Not with this bloody dogfighter loadout. I cannot get him. He's a stubborn little guy, this guy. Alright, coming in again against him. Still stranded in the desert. He needs backup. 57 damage. Really? Come on. Woo, there we go. Finally killed him. So what was that? A couple minutes before I've killed one guy? So guys, my point has been not to choose the dogfighter loadout because it's a pile of crap at air to ground combat. Unless, maybe there's another way you can kill people on the ground. So what if we try and ram them on the ground? Let's see what happens. Oh my god, what just killed me? Alright, so we're going to use the trench fighter loadout now and I'm going to break down dogfighting for you guys and we're going to discuss how to dogfight effectively. We're going to break it down and I'm also going to share my settings with you and what I think you should do in your settings in order to be more effective in the air. So let's go do all this on St. Quentin Scar on operations. Woo! Okay, that was a little mini dogfight right there. So that guy was in a lot of trouble there because I was right behind him as we were turning around in a circular motion as you do in a dogfight. I was right behind him and he couldn't shake me so I was in an optimal position to go for the kill but don't worry guys we're also going to talk about what you need to be doing when you're in that position. So one piece of advice I've got is try and wear headphones if you can and listen out for the sounds around you. Listen out for the planes around you. Now listen to this. Okay, I saw him quite easily, but did you hear how loud he was? I find headphones are really useful in dogfights. And now look at this. He's a backseat jumper. He's just jumped into the backseat. And if I had slowed down and stayed behind him, he would have wrecked me. He would have destroyed me so quickly. 
So don't forget guys, my strategy for dealing with backseat gunners is to stay fast and mobile, just fly away and come back at him at a different angle. Alright guys, so many of you comment in my previous videos that you want to see my settings. So let's go through my settings now and let's look at the key bindings for in-flight. Now there's two things I want to change here. One of them is to set pitch up to spacebar and the other one is I got so angry with the fact that I would accidentally jump out of my plane. So I changed the jump out button to P, the letter P, something really far away on my keyboard, far away from my left hand. And to be honest, I'm rarely jumping out of my plane, so it shouldn't even be an issue for you guys. Now you do want to do this, go into your video settings and change the vehicle field of view to 75. What this does is it sort of stretches the screen so that you can see more on the screen around the vehicle. But guys, don't set it too high. I mean, it looks ridiculous when you set it too high. I mean, check this out. Let's set it to the maximum and check this out. It looks like I'm flying around with a GoPro on my head. Look how it's gone with like that wide angle lens effect on the side of the screen. It looks ridiculous. It's like I'm bloody in a war with a GoPro on my head. All right, let's get back to our game again. Now in this game I was getting a lot of air to ground attacks with the trench fighter and if you want to see more on that, I mean check this out. Woo! Okay, four kills right there. Now if you want to see more of that, check out my last video where I got 161 to 1 and I broke down how to do that yourselves as well. Alright, I'm coming in for another strafing run here and, and I've, I've got an enemy AA on me right now. Now, don't forget what I said in my last video, guys. When you've got enemy AA, it's quite easy to get away from it. You're very nimble. You just have to take evasive actions as you're leaving. Now, where is he? I want to get him. All right, let's see if I can get him with that cheeky way of killing AA. Ah, oh, he's on me too quick. It's not always easy to do that, boys. Now, when I'm flying away and repairing, I like to look around and spot the planes. Make sure no planes are on my tail. And what's this? We've got one on us. Luckily, the guy is spotted, so we can see him on our radar. And the only goal in this scenario is to get behind him. And the only way you can do that is to make sure you're constantly pulling up in the most optimal way. So right now, I'm just doing a... I'm flying horizontally and pulling up. And then, luckily, I had a friendly fighter on me. That's probably what encouraged him to break the circular motion. And he's damaged his tail, so he's lost his ability to escape this. And beautiful, now he's just an easy kill. I didn't finish him off, but my mate just finished him off. The other pilot just finished him off. Now, what you just witnessed there was the makings of dogfighting. Essentially, being in that circular motion, that constant circular chase, is what dogfighting is all about in this game. And mastering that, having a strategy for that is so important. So let me share with you my strategy. So let's say this circle represents your circular motion that you're making in the map. And this circular motion represents the enemy fighter's circular motion around the map. Now let's break it down to three possible scenarios that you're in. Scenario one is when you're in the kill zone. And this is when he's got you in his sights. When you're in this situation, you really need to make sure that you do something to get out of the situation. And you can't just keep turning around unless you think he's rubbish at turning. So you can't just keep continuing in a circular motion. So there's a few things you can try. For example, if he's right behind you, then you could try pulling up and slowing your throttle to force him to overtake you. Or another thing you could try is doing something really crazy, like flying really low and in and around buildings. But you need to do something crazy to change the course of action. Scenario two is when you can't see each other. Now this is a really funny scenario and I'll talk about it later when it happens in this game. So stay tuned. Scenario 3 is when he's in your kill zone. And this is the best place you want to be. This is where you're always trying to be. You just have to keep turning with him and staying behind him and shooting whilst you're turning. And you should be fine. And you should be able to get the kill. 
but I'll give you some more tips as we go through the video. Now guys, if it wasn't already obvious, everything I've just said, everything about dogfighting only really counts for enemy fighters. If they're in an enemy attack plane, then it doesn't really count. Enemy attack planes are slow and easy to kill, so don't even think about that. Alright guys, so I'm coming in for a kill here. I'm trying to get the AA gun, I'm lining up, and then an enemy fighter's on me. So right now I'm in scenario one, I'm in his kill zone, I need to do something drastic to get out of it. And I'm trying to make some sort of last minute changes in cause to get out of it. Now I'm not being shot at anymore, but I can hear him. So we're now in scenario two, and that is where we can't see each other. I can hear him, so I'm gonna keep turning. He's still turning as well. Oh, and I've just done a switch, but you don't have to do that. You could just keep turning. And now on the radar, I'm approaching him. He's got himself in my kill zone now. And it's easy pickings now. I'm going to keep him in my kill zone now. Beautiful. Shoot as I turn. He's in trouble. He knows it. He's trying to escape the kill zone. Ah, oh, we've almost got him. Woo, there we go. That was good fun. Alright, now, I'm just coming in for a strafing run here, and an enemy fighter, sorry, an enemy attack plane has just passed me. And let's take him out. His only defense against me is that backseat gunner. He just simply doesn't have anywhere near the mobility that I do. And as soon as he jumps seat, I move away, fast and mobile, Turn around back on him and finish the job. Just so you guys know, that's what you do against these backseat jumpers. So I've just sighted this enemy plane. I'm going for him. And what's this? Oh, we got AA on me. Oh man, it's a stationary AA on me. He's got me down to 22 health. I'm taking evasive actions as I leave. 22 health left. Oh, he almost got me. But I've spotted him. I'm going to try and get him in a really cheeky way. Did I get him? Woo! I got a double kill. See you later, buddy. And we've got an enemy fighter on me now as well. Oh, man. Okay, so this is a bit awkward because we're not in any of the scenarios I've described so far. As you can see, we're moving in opposite circular motions. And we're in neither of each other's kill zones. We're both trying to get the drop on each other. And yeah, we're still going in opposite directions, but oh, he's just turned on the radar. He's on me. I'm in his kill zone. This is bad news for me. Okay, maybe I've moved to scenario two here. Yeah, I can hear him. We're in scenario two. This might be a while. This is what can happen. This is what can happen if you're in scenario two and you're both stubborn. You both want to win. You can end up like this. Guys, if I decide to just break off and fly away, he'll get me. When you're in scenario two, you want to make sure you're flying low so that you can see if he changes his direction. You can see him much easier against the sky and that's why you want to stay low. I'm on him right now. He's in my kill zone. Oh yeah, he's in my kill zone. Oh, I'm struggling to keep him in my kill zone now. He's a good pilot, this guy. Alright, there he is. This is a tense fight. He's not gonna just let me kill him. But it's the end of the game now, three tickets left. I wanna keep myself alive. Oh, I've given him the drop on me because I'm trying not to crash at the end of the game. Oh, come on, couple tickets left. Ah, man, that's a good pilot. All right, first round out of three and I've got 51 kills without dying. So this is a good game so far. But are we gonna get any salty enemies? <laughs> I can't wait to find out. 
All right, just starting this new round, and let's continue this kill streak. I've spotted an enemy fighter. Let's take care of him. Oh, it's just an attack plane, so it should be easy pickings. He's jumped to the back seat, but he's disabled. He's almost dead. I've just got to finish him off. <laughs> this is what I'm trying to tell you guys. I said in my last video, don't use the attack plane anymore if you care about surviving. The trench fighter is superior. Right now I'm caught in another dogfight with another enemy. And we're in scenario two right now. We both can't see each other. I can hear him a bit and he's broken. See, this is why you just simply do not break in scenario two without a plan. He just killed himself. He just wasted the plane at least, he jumped out. What a waste. That's why you don't break when you're in scenario two. You have to keep trying to get the drop on the other guy. Okay, there's a plane over there in the corner of my eye, so I'm gonna quickly drop my bombs on the infantry and then enter pursuit of this plane. Okay, notice how I don't shoot for him, but instead I choose to keep him in my kill zone. If I had stayed on path there, I would have sacrificed my opportunity to keep him in my kill zone. And now he's in my kill zone. He's mine. We have lost objective apples. Okay, that was fun. So, I also killed this guy, but he wasn't very good and it didn't take long. And then there was this guy and he was quite competent. So, one other tip I've got for you is to spot the enemy. Every time he passes your crosshairs, press the spot button. It's so worth it. It's so much easier to see these guys in the sky. I don't understand why people don't do it. And we enter a dogfight here. He's in my kill zone. You guys know the rest. Disabled vehicle, he's history. Notice the name of this guy I just killed. I got him as Roadkill, which is pretty cool. He jumped out and I hit him with my plane. Now check out the chat box. He's giving me some kudos here, which is pretty nice. All right guys, so that pretty much concludes the air-to-air -air combat in this game. And I ended up dying, guys. I was after a bomber here. And right before the end of the game, I tried to take him out. But his tail gunner was so good. Look at him. Look at these shots he's making on me. Wow. I was underneath him and he somehow managed to do that. That was impressive. He completely took me out. <laughs> oh, and it's the end of the game. What a game. So much air resistance in that game. <laughs> Check out the chat box. <laughs> what a comment. A little bit salty from that guy. We had to take the fight to Amiens, and they get even more salty once we finally win in Amiens, <laughs> and I've got a short clip of that at the end. Alright guys, so 81 to 1. I hope you guys have enjoyed this and found it useful. Please leave a like if you've enjoyed the video, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Peace! <laughs>